All right, welcome back. If you're like me, you like older cars. Now, older cars, I mean pre-computer. So we're talking 1981 and older. We're talking about things with carburetors that don't have computers or that have computers that really don't do a whole lot. So we'll stick with 81 and before. One of the things you don't have on those cars is a rev limiter. And a lot of those engines have a pretty picky red line where it goes from, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's done. And done is the engine's done, not just done making power. So one of the things you might want to install if you've got one of these cars is a tachometer. Not all of them came with it. The stripper models uh, way back in the day were idiot lights, a fuel gauge, and a speedometer, and that's it. Um, so if you want to take care of it, something you've thought about maybe is a tachometer. Tachometers are pretty easy to install. Um, they're usually three or four wires. And today what I'm gonna do is show you how to install one and how to wire it up. Ready? All right, let's go. All right, first thing we gotta do is we have to know how to wire this thing up. There's five parts to this. You've got your tachometer, You've got your ignition coil or a trigger source, usually the ignition coil, fuse box, a good ground, and instrument panel illumination or one of the wires that goes to it. And on my tachometer, I've got four wires. I have a black wire, I have a white wire, I have a green wire, and a red wire. On this one, red is ignition. We'll just say positive. Green is coil. White, if white will show up here. Oh, that's a poor choice, isn't it? Can't even see it. We'll have to write that in a different color. White is a loom. And black is ground. Okay, there's our four colors. Obviously white is not gonna work out on this paper. Should have thought of that ahead of time. Well, black is gonna be a loom and ground. It'll be okay. So you have your four wires coming off your tack. Red, green, black, and we'll make this one a W. So we know that one's white. Okay, your red wire has to go to a positive ignition source. So in your fuse box, you could tag uh, something that is key on engine on, but you don't wanna tag something that is battery powered all the time, or you're just gonna put a draw on your battery. On my fuse box, if these are my fuses, I've got three terminals in the center that are ignition on power, which is really convenient. They're spade terminals. So what I've done there is I took my red wire, and I came down to a spade terminal here, tagged it, and I ran back up to there. So now I've got power to the tack. That's step number one. Your green wire is your trigger. Now, off the top of your head, you would probably assume, hey, I need to go to the positive. That's wrong. Positive on the coil is just a power wire. The negative side is what actually runs your ignition system, so that's where you need the trigger from. Um, on a point system, it's when the points open and close, it's really grounding it and ungrounding it. And on a magnetic pickup, it's doing the same thing, but not with a physical trigger, it's doing it magnetically. So your green wire needs to go to the negative side, negative side of your ignition coil. If you've got the old canister style coil, you can just take off the 3 8 or 5 16 nut, put an eyelet on there, run your green wire to it. That part's done, that's step two. Then you wanna ground it. So we'll go G for ground. That one, uh, anywhere under the dash, like um, brake pedal support, anything, uh, as long as it's a good, clean, solid ground, that's what you wanna go to. So G to ground, not a problem. That's step number three. Number four, your white wire, if you really care about it, white wire goes to instrument panel illumination. So like on the 73 Ventura that we're doing, it has that sort of printed board on the back and I could run it from the wire uh, coming off of the ignition, but 
there is one bulb on this car for the instrument panel that is not part of that whole spread that makes it way easier. The heater controls are by themselves and it's one bulb and it's a gray wire and a black wire. All I did was I tagged into the gray wire on it and ran that to the white wire. So that needs to go over to here on a positive source. W, 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 and this is the G. So there we go. Now we're all set up. This is how we're gonna wire it. Oh, I almost forgot. When I tagged the power wire for the fuse box, I put in an inline fuse because it was not going to a fused source, it was going to a hot terminal. So make sure you do that. Um, either use a fuse side or put an inline fuse in so you don't blow up your tachometer or anything else for that matter. To recap, red wire is your ignition source and it needs to be fused or put a fuse in if you're not going to a fused source. Your green wire is your crank trigger or your ignition trigger. Uh, that needs to go to the negative side of your coil. Your black wire is gonna be the ground. That needs to go to a good clean ground, anything solid under the dash. Make sure you don't hit any other wires or anything, but just clean it up, good ground. Uh, your white wire is illumination. So anywhere you can grab the power wire for your dash lights or maybe your radio light, anything that is illumination only, that's what you wanna grab. That's really all there is to it. So let's go look at what I did and I'll show you how it came out. All right, so here's what I came up with. I got one of the old school column mounted tachometers. It's like a little two inch Sun Pro Super Tac. I didn't wanna block anything up here. Like traditionally you bring it up into place and it'd be right about here. And you wouldn't see uh, what gear you're in. You may not see your miles per hour, depending on how big the tack is. Cause it ends up right between like the 40 and 70 mile an hour mark. So I've got it offset just a hair. So it's gonna be down on the left side. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So as you can see, once I'm in gear, this isn't blocking anything the way I have it set up. And these rotate on the mount, so you can still have it perfectly you know, vertical if that's your OCD thing. I couldn't have it tilted, even though I could still read it even if it's tilted, but I didn't want to block anything either. So I can see what gear I'm in. I can see miles per hour all the way across. I can see all my warning lights. It's perfect. And you knock it back down into park. It's out of the way. It's not gonna hit your knees. That's the easy mount. It's just with a simple hose clamp, which I haven't painted yet. Now let's look at the wiring. Okay, on the wiring side, I'm gonna start out here where the ignition coil is, just because for everything else, I have to crawl into the dash. Right here is the negative side of my coil. And I just took that nut off and I've got an eyelet. Make sure you use shrink tubing when you do this and you solder and crimp. And I ran the green wire here. Here's my green wire, it's coming down towards the firewall. And I've got a grommet that was not used that I ran it through. So I didn't run metal to metal, didn't have to drill another hole. That is just run straight through a grommet and down into the cab. All right, let's go look at all the other wires. All right, so here's my green wire. It comes in off the firewall over there on the passenger side of the brake pedal, between the brake pedal and gas pedal, actually. Um, and the green wire goes up and it tags into my green wire. It's right up here. This is the wiring harness for the tachometer. So that's my green wire. I've got every, all the connections soldered and heat shrink. Here's what I'm talking about on my fuse box. I have an ignition source that is just a spade terminal and that's what I use. So when I did that, I put in this inline fuse so that way I don't blow anything up. And then you take the red wire, you follow the red wire up, make sure you got a little bit of a service loop on all your wires. That way, as this tack moves, it's not pulling anything tight. And that goes right back up to my tack harness. This is the ground wire. Ground wire obviously goes to the tack harness. There's good ground already here on the brake pedal brace. That's what we used. The white wire was a little bit harder because I had to run all the way over here to where the heater controls are. And I, there's no radio in it right now, which made that part easy, but it means I had to make a lot of space. That way when the stereo goes in, I can still have it. And all I did was tag into the gray wire that is the instrument panel lights for the heater controls. And that's it. All right, so we've got this thing wired up. We've got it mounted to the column. The only thing left to do is to test it. So we've got a couple things here just to make sure everything works. First thing we've got to do is start it up. When I turn the key on, uh, the needle may bounce just to show that it got the ignition power. Some do, some do, some don't. See that real quick? Bounce back to zero. That means it got its ignition power. Now let's start it up and make sure it works. And 
idling at about a thousand. That's right, it's cold, so that's probably right. Responds well, so that's good. We got that all hooked up. All right, so we're good on that. We'll shut it off so you can hear what I'm saying. Next, we gotta test our illumination. And, oh, there we go. You can see I've definitely got it where the illumination does work. That's part two. Uh, the only thing left to do on this car is set your red line. Now, you may wanna go and check service manuals and see what the red line was from the factory and then knock it down a little bit. This is an older Pontiac motor. I know that the big blocks, um, especially like Buick, Olds, Pontiac, I know like 455s had a little bit of a problem with oiling. And really above 5,000, you're probably not good. So 5,000 really should be the limit on this engine. Just for a comfort factor, you can just take the needle and move it down just a little bit. 4,800, that sounds good. So that's it. It's a pretty easy installation. Uh, it's a nice safety measure to have, especially on an older engine with a lower RPM limit and no rev limiter like you have on newer cars. Uh, definitely something I recommend if you're ever going to do anything with the car performance wise or anything else for that matter. I mean, you could manually shift it now and watch your tachometer. You can have it neutral or park checking timing and be sure of what your RPMs are. It's just a safety measure is all it really is. It's cheap, easy install. Hopefully this helps. And uh, if you do get an older car, I definitely recommend putting one in. If nothing else, it looks cool. All right. Well, we'll see you next time.